Kentucky is a southern state known for a very famous horse race, bourbon whiskey, and of course, fried chicken. Now, southern fried chicken is not exclusive to the bluegrass state. However, KFC, aka Kentucky Fried Chicken, is definitely the most recognizable name in the fried chicken game. KFC has transcended the state and probably even the country, and it's gone worldwide, right? People love it in Japan, people love it in India, it's everywhere. The good news is, no matter where you're sitting in the world right now, you can make this golden brown, crispy, glorious Kentucky Fried Chicken at your crib. And I'm gonna show you how. Welcome back to Cooking the States, a series where we cook a famous dish from a different state in every episode in an attempt to better understand the true identity of American food. Fried chicky starts with the chicky. This is a three and a half pound full bird with giblets removed, and that's really just a super cute name for the organs of the chicken. I don't know why it's called that. I'm gonna break this bird into eight parts. Those are the drumsticks, the thighs, the breasts, and the wings. As a rule of thumb, buying and breaking down a whole animal yourself is a little cheaper than, you know, if you were to buy it by its parts. However, if you were a big drumstick person or a thigh guy, you know, I'm not gonna stop you from grabbing yourself a pack of whatever tick your fancy, do you? If you do buy a whole bird, do not toss that carcass, use it to make stock. This is what you should have after the breakdown. Remember, two thighs, two drummers, two breasticles, two wings, and those little guys over there are the tenders that I removed from the breasts. Season all of the chicken liberally with salt and black pepper on both sides, then situate the chicken on a wire rack over a sheet tray and refrigerate uncovered overnight. This is called dry brining, and it's a great way to ensure that the chicken is properly seasoned and that it's going to stay juicy when we fry it. Sometime back in 2016, a reporter from Funny Enough right here in Chicago actually went down and tracked the original KFC 11 Herbs and Spices secret blend. It's not so secret anymore and all of the information is public. Uh, you can find it via a quick Google search, but I'll save you the time and put it right here. But we're going to modify it just a little bit and I'll show you what I mean. For every two cups of flour, you are going to add all of the listed spices. And I just went ahead and doubled the recipe because I wanted to make extra, but if you're only gonna fry one chicken, this is more than enough. To a shallow tray or bowl, add the two cups of flour, all of the spices, a half teaspoon of baking powder, and two teaspoons of kosher salt. Whisk that all around until blended, then set it aside. For the wet ingredients, you'll add four cups of buttermilk, four eggs, and a pinch of salt to a large bowl, then whisk that up until smooth as well. Set it aside. To pay homage to the South and the way that they've made chicken down there for ages, we are going to fry in my nifty large cast iron skillet. Fill the skillet a little less than halfway with neutral oil that can be taken to high heat without burning, so you know that's your veg oils of the world, your grapeseed oils, any of those will get the job done. Bring the oil to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, then dredge the chicken first in the seasoned flour, then into the buttermilk, then once again into the flour. We want craggly stuck on bits that are going to fry up nicely and give us that classic sort of southern fried chicken cavernous exterior. Okay, now carefully lower the chicken into the hot oil, making sure that the oil doesn't boil over. That would not be good. We don't want that. Fry the chicken in batches and do not overcrowd the pan or the oil temperature can drop very easily, which is, you know, no bueno if you want crispy chicky. That would make for soggy chicky. Nobody likes soggy chicky. After about five minutes of frying, remove the chicken from the oil and set it aside to rest on a wire rack for 10 minutes. The chicken will look finished after you fry it for the first time, but it is not. Increase that oil temperature to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the chicken has rested, carefully lower it into the frying oil to fry for a second time for three to four minutes or until deeply golden brown herb than, you know, the last time we fried it. Then transfer it back to the wire rack to drain. We double fry to expel built up moisture on the surface of the chicken that naturally releases as it rests after it fries for the first time. The second fry cooks off all that said moisture, giving us an ultra crispy and craggly exterior. Fresh out the fryer, go ahead and season that finished chicken up with a pinch of kosher salt and the God particle, AKA MSG. Chicken is not fully cooked yet, right? If they're not cooked to 165 degrees Fahrenheit internal. 
To do that, we're gonna take this entire tray and put it in a 300 degree Fahrenheit oven until it's cooked through to that internal temperature we want. Go ahead and remove the tenders. These are cooked, they're tiny. And remember that the breasts are gonna cook at a different rate than the dark meat, so just keep an eye on that, not a big deal. If I was doing this big batch, I would sous vide these, make sure they're all cooked through into temperature so that all we have to do is coat them and fry them for color and texture. Transfer the chicken on the wire rack into a preheated 300 degree Fahrenheit oven and bake for 20 to 25 minutes or until the internal temp of that chicken reads 165 Fahrenheit. All of that frying has made me a thirsty lad, so let's quench our thirst with a classic Kentuckian cocktail, the mint julep. Add eight mint leaves to a rocks glass, then muddle it just enough to release its aroma. There's no need to completely pulverize the mint here. To the glass, add a half ounce pour of simple syrup, which is just equal parts sugar dissolved into water. Then two ounces of your favorite bourbon whiskey. Give that all a stir, then top the whole thing with tiny ice, which they're gonna hook you up with if you ask at your local grocery store. You know, if you ask the right guy at least. Or just go ahead and crush some ice at home in a bag, and either one works. It's optional, but I like to finish the whole thing with a few dashes of bitters and a sprig of mint for garnish. That right there is the Kentucky Derby in a glass, my friends. Okay, by now our chicken should be finito, so let's take a look. And you know I had to do it. We gotta see where we stand, so let's take a little side-by-side -side look see. All right, here we go. We got our stuff and we got KFC stuff. Just for a little side-by-side -side comparison here. Um, and I did not pick, here, I'll show you right now. They're all the same. That one's actually probably better because it's missing skin. <laughs> Just a little moist, not too uh, exciting. What did you really expect though? All right, I'm gonna start with this. I mean, it's the, the taste you know and love if you like KFC, what can I say? Let me cleanse my palate. Ooh, I'm stoked on this. Just look at that craggly, you can see the spices kind of like in the mix, got the salt and the MSG stuck to it. Whoa, dude. <laughs> All right, I'm biased, but like, you can see it. There's a difference there. That, my friends, is finger looking good. I think Colonel Sand Daddy would be into this. <laughs> it's moist, it's seasoned well. You can see right here. It's just moist. And we love the word moist around these parts. Thank you, Kentucky. You do not sucky. <laughs> To all of you Kentuckians who asked, I did not ignore you. When we do a victory lap, the next time we come around to Kentucky, we'll take a closer look at Burgoo. And if you don't know what that is, Google it, but I don't know what's gonna come up. Maybe some weird cartoon, maybe the dish, you'll see, I don't, I don't know, Burgoo. Next up on our virtual culinary road trip, we are heading to Louisiana. And if you think you know what we're making, take a whack in the comments below, give it a guess. TY, so, so much for watching. If you dug the video, give it a like. If you're new here, sub to the channel, all that YouTube guy stuff, that's me. And I shall see you beautiful souls very soon.